Hiya folks, you're really welcome along to this week's episode of John's Garage. As you can see, I'm back in the Rover 75, somebody pointed out, it's not a 75, so back in the Rover 75, and we're going to have a little look at some of the electrical issues that are occurring with this car. So, just to, just to test everything out and test the theory, we'll take the key, put it in. Now you guys have heard this car running before, or have you? Well, I have had the car running, but I'm going to just try and start it right now. And it starts perfect. Okay, that's not what I was expecting, however. I came out to this car yesterday, wouldn't start at all. The night before, started perfect. So it's kind of a bit of an intermittent fault going on here. So, with that in mind anyway, we're going to do a couple of different things. So first of all, this is my crappy Aldi OBD reader. Generally, I take this with me from buying a car. It's handy just to plug in, just to get a sense of what's going on. I wouldn't, if I were you, use it as a main diagnostic tool because it's rubbish. But um, we'll see, we'll see what it does right now. So it's just currently scanning. This Pick this up for 15 quid. It sometimes will give you an indication of what's going on. As I say, I wouldn't use it for diagnosis or anything like that. I'm gonna show you something else in a couple of minutes, which is far better than this. But obviously, when you start whipping out a laptop when you're buying a car, people might be a bit like, what are you doing to my car, okay? So I'm just waiting for this to go on. While I'm waiting for this, I wanna say a huge thank you to all my subscribers. We've gone over a thousand subscribers, folks. When I started off doing this, I really didn't think that was gonna happen. So I'm really, really happy, really, really proud of that. Um, and I'm really, really grateful that for, for whatever reason, a thousand people have decided to tune in every week to see what's going on, okay? I wasn't expecting that. So, back to this. We've one fault here, P2141, and I know from looking this up already, that is the EGR valve. So that's grand, we have the EGR valve, that's an issue, and we'll get to that. But what I really wanted to show you today is here on my laptop. Okay, so I'm just gonna lift over my laptop. And just while I'm doing that, I'm gonna plug in a different OBD2 cable. We'll get that in. And if you're like me, folks, you always go down with the wrong, turn the wrong way first time, every time. But now I have it in right, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna open up a free program I downloaded online. Now this isn't sponsored or nothing like that. that <sighs> Folks, it's hot. It is Sunday and if anybody else is feeling the heat today, I've just cut the lawn, I'm ready to drop dead. Um, I would open up a few more windows and stuff in here. Well, heck, maybe I can open up a few more windows. We'll open up that one. Woo, it works. And we'll open up those ones as well. Probably not much point in opening up the driver's home when the door is open. Anyway, back to what I'm doing here, okay? What I want to have a look at here is a program that's freely available online, and it's specific for the Rover 75 and the MG ZT. It's called TOEF, that particular electric window. Now it's working. Okay, for some reason it was stuck there. Anyway, TOEF, T-O-A-F. It's a diagnostic tool. It's made by a couple of Polish uh, computer programmers, as far as I know and it works in the Rover 75. Now, hopefully it works in the Rover 75. So I've connected this a couple of different times and it's great for really getting in depth into the fault codes, into what's taking place in the engine, what's taking place in the fuel system. And it's also useful if you have one of these cars, you want to turn on like daylight running lights, if you want to program your electric windows to go up and down faster, it gives you full access to that. And there's also something else in here and I'll show you that in a few minutes. So first thing I want to do is a scan. So I'm just clicking in here. And hopefully this will give us maybe a bit, bit better indication of what's going on. Now, as I say, folks, just while we're waiting for this to scan, I wasn't actually expecting this car to turn, uh, to start when I turned the key. Uh, what's been happening is, is it'll start fine right now. I can come out in the morning and this thing won't start at all. It'll go into what's called EP emergency program and it just won't start. The engine will just spin over and the fuel pumps won't engage, so it just won't turn on. So what we are coming up with here is instrument cluster, I-K-E, instrument cluster issues. Apparently I have five of those. And this seems to be the common thing with this. Now I'm just noticed as well, it didn't show me anything here for the engine. And that tells me there's probably something going on there with the engine as well. So 25 errors. 38 hours with F8 unknown, F6 unknown, F7 unknown. So that's a bit irritating. So while this is good, it doesn't give me full access to everything. CAN bus, okay, we have a few hours here. What's going on here? 37, okay. So 
I can read this again, or what I can do is I'm just going to clear them, okay? Um, now, these keep cropping back up, but what I'm getting a sense of here, when I got this card, the person who gave it to me told me the ECU had gotten flooded, all right? So this is giving me a sense that maybe there's something more going wrong with that ECU. Maybe it is actually damaged from, from the water, okay? Now, interestingly enough, I've just turned the engine, click the engine button, it's not accessing the engine ECU, okay? Now, this has happened to me already, okay? Where one day it will access it, and other days it won't access it. So, I don't know whether it's TOEF is the issue, or whether it's ECU is the issue here. Now, despite all that, when I did have full access, I did clear all fault codes. I'm just reconnecting to it here to see if I can bring up the engine. And it is telling me it's reading errors. Okay, so when it comes to the engine, see, it is accessing it now. I'm not entirely sure. I think I think it could be me who's causing that issue. But anyway, cruise control operating unit has an error. Got no idea why that's not an issue. Glow device. Okay, so I'm getting an error here with glow plugs, I would imagine. Okay, and EGR. We're, we're kind of used to the fact that the EGR is an issue. It's telling me here the odometer is 146,230 kilometers, which corresponds exactly to what's on the dial, which is great. Fuel rail pressure, 289.16 bar. That seems pretty okay. Injector volume, 7.17, and so on and so forth. It goes on through all these different things, okay? So I'm just going to, again, clear all these. And the reason I'm not too worried about clearing these, folks, is these keep coming back up, you see here now. The EGR, that one just won't clear. So I'm going to have to look into what's going on there a little bit more with the EGR. Now, most of you will say it's just a failed EGR. It could be that. It probably is, but it may not be. The other issue that occurs with these is people will delete the EGR, but that throws up the engine warning light for the EGR and these. You can't actually fully delete them on a 2004 model. It's just a bit of a quirk or late pre facelift okay so it's just a little bit of a quirk it requires somebody who really knows what they're doing to be able to do it so again i'm just going to do a full scan of the car here see what we come up with and folks if i'm doing this wrong if you're an actual mechanic walk watching this you're probably balking at what i'm doing right now but at the end of the day it should work it should be okay car scanning car scanning i can hear all the different things firing up there yeah there we go so, that's all that. Now, I did say I wanted to show you, I'm going to clear all those again while I'm here. I did say I wanted to talk about something else which is on this. So again, this gives you access to the ABS units, the uh, airbags, gearbox, and also there's something there called Webasto, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, now I'm going to just click into the engine, again in there. There is something here now. I haven't been brave enough to do this, but I just want to see, does it show up? Yes, it does. <laughs> ECU tuning and a big warning comes up warning you do it on your own risk okay apparently I can tune this car via this program now I've never tuned a car before I need to research this a little bit more but the thing about TOEF is folks T-O-A-F it's well written about online and that's the smart thing when you're if you're researching getting a cheap project car or anything like that it's going to shut this down always think about parts supply Okay, are the parts still there? Is there a good knowledge of the cars? And so on and so forth. And in the case of the Rover 75, a massive wealth of information online. So I'm just going to just double check the car starts. There we go. Hey, presto. And no warning lights apart from my engine light and a brake fault. I wonder what the brake fault is. That's probably just a wear sensor, I would imagine. From, I haven't looked into it too much. Car starts and runs fine. Okay, now... Just to talk to you about one or two of the other little things, looking these up online. Okay, you'll notice I haven't operated the sunroof. I don't have the balls to operate the sunroof after what happened earlier in the week. So I was testing it. There's little clips here, little sunrail guides, and unfortunately the sunroof stuck. And I thought nothing of it. I got called to come in for tea, went in, came back out, and there was a lot of smoke starting to emanate from around here. Okay, so it didn't pop the fuse. Okay, but the motor stayed trying to actively shut the sunroof now luckily I, I was only in now in a minute because i had to come back out here to get my phone 
copped onto it. So I've just disabled everything for the minute just for pure safety, okay? Um, but looking it up online, these are only a couple of euros and it's easy enough apparently to swap it all out and get it all back functioning. And I have tested the motor as well. The motor isn't burned out or anything like that, which is superb, okay? That's super news, super, super, super news. So let's go around to the back of the car there, folks. Just gonna throw the key in there for safety in case the kids go at it. Okay, folks, so the reason I want you to join me around here at the back of the car isn't to show you my gloriously empty boot. It's actually to show you this box, okay? Now, folks, the generosity of people in terms of advice, in terms of support that this Rover 75 has brought out of people is incredible. I have in-tank fuel system. I have a manifold for the engine. There's a couple of other little bits in there. One or two I'm going to point out. I have a spare and known to be good ECU. Now, my suspicion is that the ECU in this car isn't actually good. And the person who donated these parts also suspects the same thing. So I have that there and we'll figure out that bit in just a moment, okay? Now, also looking in here, and I, my heart got really excited when I saw this, but then I realized I just had this, is a Webasto preheating system. So this, you can time it to warm up the car for yourself on a frosty morning. So when you go out, this will have burnt a little bit of diesel, a little system you put in under the bonnet, and will have warmed up the car. Now, what I would ask, if anybody has the rest of the system, and maybe would like to donate or sell it at a very, very cheap price, I'd be interested in buying it, but it's not a priority right now. So as I say, the main priority I have is getting this car running and consistent and not cutting out and so on and so forth. Actually, it stopped the cutting out thing. And let me tell you about the cutting out. Well, I'll tell you about that in just a minute. But before I tell you about that, okay, the other little challenge I have back here, we have leaks. We have leaks and multiple leaks. And in the next video, we may investigate some of those. It's too friggin' warm to do it today, being honest, folks. I'm just, I'm just not going to go on. But I have a little bit of technology in terms of that that'll help us out as well. Now, one or two other things I'm going to show you. Please don't be horrified when I show you. It is a work in progress. Um, and let's just have a look, I think. So folks, I did mention, oh, that's bloody hot. Oh, you devil. I, let's just not touch the car. Okay, so I did mention in previous videos that this particular wing had multiple hand painted finishes on it and it did. So what I got was a little bit of paint thinner and I started cleaning it off and it was coming off great. And I was like, why is, Jesus, a lot of this paint coming off. And then I realized all of this panel had been hand painted. Now, as you can see, it's pretty rough, but I'll get, Credit where credit's due, if I could even say that. They have primed underneath it, for whatever reason, underneath the hand painting. So I'm gonna to have to remove all of this, see what's there, probably send it off for a professional finish, but guys, I'm not gonna lie, that's way down the line. I'm not overly fussed about this, okay? Looks worse than it is. Fortunately, there's no, no ripples, there's no crushing, there's nothing. It's just a bit of primer, just a bit of nasty paint. Now, good news is I did go around the rest of the body and tidy up a lot more of that paint that was on. And you can see it's just tiny little marks and little scuffs. And to be honest, I'd happier see those than hand painted finish, okay? So let's jump under the bonnet and we'll talk about my starting issue. So folks, you might be wondering why I haven't actually recorded all of the work. And that is because of a very simple reason. I'm kind of robbing half an hour here, half an hour there in the evenings. Once the kids have gone to bed, I run out and I can do something in half an hour. And a little, it is a little bit challenging. I'm not going to lie to set up the cameras and get everything ready to go. But I do hope any major jobs I do in this to record for you. Now, I said I was having a start, well, a cutting out issue actually is what I was having. And I think I've solved it. And I solved it in a very simple way. I went back to basics on this engine. So first of all, any loose or frayed wires. Haven't found anything, which is great. Okay. I did try one or two things to figure out the cutting out. Like there's a temp sensor in there. Just unplug it, see if that works. I haven't gotten to the math sensor yet. There's a reason I'm waiting for that, but anyway, I'll get into that later on. And just basic stuff, like I've topped up the fuel tank up to the half level, up to the half mark. I cleaned the EGR just in case, you know, those simple kind of things. And then I kind of looked at the battery and I said, that isn't the right battery for this car. I knew this wasn't the right battery. So what I did was I went out to my local scrapyard, went out with the correct battery code for this particular car. And I said, I would like that battery there, this battery. And the reason I wanted this battery is really, really simple. Number one, it's called Lion. Number two, it's got a line on the front of it. So that's not bad. Number three, it was about 12 months old and it cost me 40 euro. Bargain. Okay, so I had that battery, brought it home, threw it in. And the cutting out issue is gone. Okay, no more cutting out, no more issues with any of that. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that's all it was. It was just a current issue. 
Um, so hopefully that's it. Now I do have a lot of other work here. I'm going to be servicing the car, so I have a service kit on the way. The other thing I was hoping to do, folks, and I, I, please remind me if I don't do, do this in the comments, I'm hoping underneath each video now to start writing down the cost that I've spent on this car so that I can live and stay true to, the, to what I started off and intended doing was to keep it a really cheap project that you could do in your driveway and that could be respect, respectable. Now, speaking of that, even though we do these things in our driveway and we try and do them as well as we can, sometimes we gotta get a little bit of help. And I suspect I'm gonna have to get help with this. Okay, software, much like mechanics, isn't really my thing. I don't mind playing around with it a little bit, but I think when it gets to these modern cars, if you can't diagnose it using what I've used, probably got to go to a professional so folks don't be surprised if this ends up having to go to a professional but I don't think that is a hit I think everybody doing a modern project has to I suppose be open to that okay you may not be able to solve every issue yourself anyway the most boring update in the world thank you all very much for subscribing if you haven't subscribed already please do and we'll talk to you again soon folks thanks <laughs>